We just had a long talk with the club's owner, Louis Mendonca, and he was a little concerned about uh, the transfer window because it was a little busier than either one of us had anticipated. So we've got a little bit to get into, so let's roll the intro and jump right into the transfers. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to the Bielsa Journeyman Football Manager 21. This is episode six of our third club with Leicester City. Don't forget, hit the like button if you like what I what you see here and what I'm doing. That's the way you support the channel. Thank you very much for that. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. We have daily football manager content here on the channel, Monday through Saturday, six days a week. Sunday, the only day that I take off, and that day's not really resting because I'm usually recording and rendering and uploading that day, just trying to stay ahead for the work week. But uh, anyway, hope you guys are doing well. Let's get into it. As you can see, we have 219 million left in the bank. We have dropped to 77 and a half million in the transfer budget. Uh, there's plenty of money here, right? <laughs> plenty of money. Uh, taking a look at recent. News, we are third in the league on payroll expenditure at 6.58, just in front of West Ham, trailing behind, uh, or just in front of Swindon, I'm sorry, and trailing behind Norwich and league-leading Everton. Uh, average is $110 million a month with an average spend of $4.6 million per club. So the median average is down here around 12th for Watford. Real quick, playing a little catch up. Let's take a look at the comp at the schedule. So last episode ended up with the uh, FA Cup third round loss to Brentford two to one. We beat Shrewsbury five nil. Andrew Andrew Makiton with four goals. Gomez Santos with a goal. Portsmouth a three nil win. Menza Cernan and Carpenter off the bench with goals. A nil nil draw with Lincoln who are in the top four, and Birmingham 5-0 win. Mikatan picks up a brace, Menza and Carpenter with goals, and we just beat Walsall 4-0, and that was just before the transfer deadline day. Jordan Mensa, Andrew, Andre Mikatan with goals, Cernan with a brace. So our goal scorers are still performing. Taking a look here, getting you caught up. 22 goals from 25 starts. For Mikatan across all action, 19 and 27 for Cernan, 16 and 30 for the Loney, Jamie Romaine, and then we also have 12 from Jordan Mensa, and we've got Gomez Santos and Nogami looking to get to double figures. Might be the most players I've ever had score double figures in a season. I think Nogami would be there. Uh, he's been off on so much international duty, he just hadn't played very much. And uh, Gomez Santos, you can see, he's making the most of his chances when he's getting on the pitch, mostly as a reserve. Wanted to kind of take a look at the some standings around the league, or around the world, just to let you guys get caught up. I know you guys like to see these kind of things. Burnley currently leading the Premier League. Uh, by three points over Man City with a game in hand. Looking pretty good there. Newcastle and West Brom in the top four. Chelsea, Liverpool, Bristol City down there. And Arsenal, Man United, Tottenham in the mid-table. Leeds trying to stave off relegation. Fulham, Notts County, and Tranmere currently hold those spots. Tranmere is... 15 points off the pace. Knotts County is 11 points off the pace with 11 games. They play, what, 36 or 38? I think it's 38. So 14 games, 13 games for Knotts County. What? <laughs> uh, if you can't tell, new layout here at the house. 
Uh, I have uh, moved my office here in the house, uh, and I work from home. Well, I don't work from home. I'm in, I'm in sales, so I do have a home office, and I also do my recording and stuff. So uh, just to kind of give you a real quick layout, my desk used to be in that corner over there, uh, so it's moved about 50, well, to the other side of this 15-foot stretch here in this room. This is a 15 by 30 room, so now I'm in this corner uh, rather than that corner. A uh, little bit smaller desk, um, so everything's a little bit more compact, a little less storage, and I'm still in the process of moving a lot of stuff around, uh, so this will change a little bit. Couldn't get my camera exactly how I wanted it, but basically uh, I've got a, uh, a Michigan print up here, uh, a panoramic view of the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I've got my away jersey from this year for Leeds United, a Patrick Bamford jersey leading the team in scoring. Uh, we've got our Funko Pops from Motley Crue uh, over here. Uh, just a few little doodads, and uh, you know, that's about it. So let's get into the transfers. It has been pretty busy. We do have two players that we have signed and confirmed. They will be joining the club at the end of the season. Zavi Dorka is a 18-year-old uh, defender. Uh, he can play center and left. Pretty solid, six foot five. Jumping reach is really good. Needs to develop, but he's only 18. I think he's got a lot of up, upward ability. And you can see he's only one and a half star currently, four and a half star potential. So we got him to develop our youth squad. We'll put him in the, probably the U23s next year. Eugenio Falsatini uh, from Milan. He joins us for eleven million dollars. Center back, six foot three, sixteen jumping reach, thirteen heading. Very very solid. Good stamina. Good work rate. All those things that Bielsa loves that I uh, that I am trying to follow suit. And uh, he will be building for the future as well. So let's take a look at what happened during the month of January. As I mentioned last episode, Kay Van Essen did play his last game for the club. He's off to Olympiacos for $13 million. Zach Corbett, won, our captain actually, but wasn't playing a ton only four matches, two starts, two off the bench. Uh, he ends up going for five and a quarter to Aston Villa. Uh, Andre Staniclescu goes to Luton for one and a half. He was he was doing a good job for us, but he was more of a number 10, which we're not playing with. He's also 33, and I just felt, you know, we could move him on. Uh, we did pay 6.75, or Lester did, years ago. But, um, you know, since we've taken over, uh, just hadn't really played for us. He's, he's, done, he's done some bits for us, but he was expendable. Uh, we moved him on. Danny Parsons wanted to play a little bit more and push for a loan. So he was our only backup right back. So we sent him out on loan. They're picking up his salary. It necessitated us making a move to sign another right back. Uh, Ramick, uh, one of our reserve keepers, goes to Hull for 205000 And in a crossover from our other save, if you're watching the DeGroff Shop single-team save, uh, Melvin Gerber, our star center back there, we have signed him uh, and loaned We have signed him and then loaned him out to Blackburn in the championship. And uh, he's got five-star potential. We picked him up for $3.2 million from DeGroff Shop, and uh, looking forward to him developing five-star potential. I believe it was five-star potential, four and a half maybe. How does this happen, okay? <laughs> we sign a guy for 475000 right? He comes in, he starts 22 matches, allows 20 goals, and has seven clean sheets with a 7.01 rating, and we've sold him for a $500,000 profit to the team that's chasing us, Everton. How crazy is that? Uh, so he joined them uh, just re just yesterday, so he has not played for them yet. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he's going to be their number one or if he goes in as a backup. Because we moved some keepers, or a keeper in Ramick, I wanted to, well, Van Essen too, Van Essen left. I needed to sign a reserve, right? 
the guy that I signed was actually, in my opinion, better than Rollinson. And then I made another offer on another keeper to be a true backup for us. And that made Rollinson expendable. So crazy days. I wasn't expecting that. was not a move I was anticipating making. But that's how it goes. Uh, Sebastian Amon, I think we talked about him. Uh, he comes in on loan from uh, Eintracht Frankfurt, our former club. Uh, he is a right back, so he'll be in the mix there. Uh, Jay Gibbon is our new starting keeper, 25 years old, three and a half star ability. Uh, he's pretty much maxed out already. Uh, Lincoln bought him from Everton for 53 million, and he's played a lot for them, by the way. Four starts, four clean sheets. And that Lincoln match that we drew, he stopped a penalty. He, he had an actual save on a penalty shot by his former club in the waning minutes of the game, like the 86th minute, um, to, to preserve a draw. Outstanding start. So he is our new number one. My dog is not happy to be outside. Uh, Manuel Ch Chasson. From Familical, uh, Chow, $2.8 million, a 20-year-old Venezuelan, three-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. He is a left winger, very, very pacey, pretty good work rate, off the ball, determination, decision-making, uh, very astute crosser of the ball as well, so looking for him to come in. We, you know, we do have Romain out there. Romain's probably going to be the starter the rest of this year, but Romain's on loan from Chelsea. This guy's going to be our starter definitely next season. We had gotten an offer for Lindorfo, and it was a pretty good size offer, and we were still concerned about losing Michael McNeil, who had been who had asked to be put on the transfer list. By the way, he signed. He has now signed a new contract and said he's happy to stay at the club. So uh, anyway, but we were concerned about losing both of those guys, and we've also been inundated with offers on Rush, our other center back, left back person. So I, I said I'm. I really need to look at a center back. So we signed Andre Panchenko. <sighs> Wasn't really happy with the deal after I got him, but look at this. Six foot five, 20 jumping reach, 14 heading. I'm thinking he might be really good on set pieces, just my thought. But he's only started uh, one match, and he did okay, 7.2 rating. But you can see two and a half star current, three star potential, uh, not the upside. And he drove a hard bargain. I'm probably going to move this guy on pretty quickly, probably in the offseason, only because he would not accept anything other than important player. And I wanted to make him a squad player. That was the re recommended. But this was kind of a buyer's pinch, I think. Turned out we didn't need to do that, so I'm probably going to move him on. Uh, here's the other keeper we signed for $15 million, Jan L. Batubi, Batabi, three-star current, five-star potential, very solid, and uh, he's allowed three goals in one friendly. Uh, not the start I'd like to see from him, but that's why he has been relegated to backup. Juan Pablo Maney from Pinarol for 2.7. He'll be in the right back mix, six feet tall, two and a half star current, five star potential, 18 years old from Uruguay. And uh, he came up from Pinarol, went to Sevilla on loan, and we have snapped him up for a relatively low fee, 2.7 million. Uh, Drazen Kolic was a transfer deadline signing. We already had him on the books. Uh, we were just waiting on his uh, work permit. He comes in for 17 and a quarter, 26-year-old Croatian. The only reason I signed this guy was the the guy we just talked about, uh, Panchenko. One of the things that he wanted was to strengthen the midfield. I literally tried to negotiate that out three times uh, before he really got bitchy and uh so i said all right so i had to take it and now i kind of wish i hadn't but we so we went out we signed this guy in an attempt to strengthen the midfield he is pretty good three-star ability 26 years old 
10 under 21 caps for Croatia. Uh, very good physicals, off the ball's good, passing's good, dribbling is solid. So he can play out on the wing, uh, which will give some competition out there next year when Romain goes back to Chelsea, but also hopefully counts as strengthening the midfield. And Nogami comes back from Japan. He's been gone for a month, uh, it seems like. And then uh, we signed Gerber for the $3.7 million dollars in the crossover. I want to I want to say since FM14 when I started this, well 17 really when I officially started recording, but 14 when I started playing football manager. I don't think I've ever had a crossover player where I've signed from another team. Typically I don't do two saves at a time. Usually I do one save 6 6 days a week. But uh, remember, you guys said to go back to three days a week, and it seems to be working. So kudos to you guys. Uh, there's the transfer roundup, the high, the high signings. If you're interested, uh, there is your championship wrap-up. Uh, $77 million by Norwich, including 31 and a half on one center back. So that is what we're looking at. If we take a look at the team report, and our current depth chart. Uh, so we've now got Gibbon and El Butabi in goal. Rush, Wheel, Ramsey on the left. McNeil, Ramsey, Lindorfo in the mid. And also Panchenko and Maney down there. Giving depth, Felix and Maney on the right. Wheel, Nagami, Day, and uh, Stige and Henson's in the mid. Henson's, Mensa is uh, getting the start on the right with Henson's in the mid. But, uh, you know, we've got a lot of depth out there on the left. Uh, Chacon, Kolick now in with Romain giving some depth on that left wing. Mikatin, Cernan, Gomez, Santos, and Carpenter up top in the striker position. So that's where things are at transfer-wise. Uh, in the competition, we're currently 72 points after 30 matches. Uh, there are 46 matches in the championship, a very long and congested season. We're on a plus 75 goal differential. I don't think I've ever had a plus 100 goal differential. So we are shooting for that this year. That is the goal, what I'm hoping to see. Fingers crossed. Uh, that would be something astounding. And uh, we only have a four-point lead on Everton, however, uh, but in the automatic promotion, we do have a 12-point advantage over Norwich. So that is good. Today we are going to play, or we're going to have highlights for Nottingham Forest, and then we'll play Luton on camera. So let me get up to the Nottingham Forest game. We will look at the highlights for that, and then we'll play Luton after that. You know, it was really strange. I was noticing, not being a Leicester City fan in real life, I was looking at the uh, thing. They don't really have any fierce rivalries, which I thought was interesting. Uh, there's a rebound off of Mike attempt to Mensa. Mensa slots that home for our first goal. First minute of the second half, over the top. Cernan chest it down. I thought he was going to get this shot off. He plays it back to Menza, who slots it across the keeper. His second goal gives us a 2-0 advantage. Then he beats the keeper, Hayward, for a penalty to get his hat trick, giving us a 3-0 advantage. We looked really solid there. Rush up to Romain. He plays it over to Menza, who beats the keeper at the near post. What a game. Four goals and two in three minutes for him. And then Romain comes in and gets a late penalty for the sealer. 5-0 victory, four goals from Jordan Menza, player of the match. What a game for him. We're going to give him some praise, definitely. And six in a row without a loss. So there's the highlights from that. We'll be back to play Luton in just a second. Here's what I meant. I was looking at this. There's no fierce rivalries, and they only have Nottingham Forest is a local rival, Derby's a local rival, and Coventry. So everything's local. That's really weird. Are they, You guys let me know in the comments. Are they the only club? And I'm sure this is pretty accurate, right? That they don't have, that they don't have any real true rivalries? That's insane. 
well, you know, I don't know. Let's take a look at the team selection. We're going with Gibbon in goal, Rush, Felix on the back line with Lindorfo and McNeil, Nagami and Wheel in the mid, Romain and Mince on the wings, Mikatan and Cernan up top for us today. Another five goals that last match, right? Does that put us to a plus 80 goal differential? We are in the blue. Luton are in the orange. Romain. Oh, Romain went for the tackle and got fouled. Turns the ball over to us. Good job. Nogami hasn't played a lot. As I said, a lot of time over in Japan and international. Uh, there was a shot. I think Cernan took that one. Got denied. Oh, they do have, look, Stanislescu is uh, number 18 for them. So he is uh, starting, I don't know if he's, there he is right there. So he, he looks like he's either, probably their number 10. Romain finds Mikatan up into the box. Taken down with a tackle. He recovers. There's Romain. And a big shot in. Oh, that should have been in the net. He was wide open at the top of the box. Let's encourage him. Horrible throw right to the other side. Lindorfo pokes it out to Mensa. Felix on the overlap. Back to wheel. Mensa. Oh, he just turned on power through that tackle and took a crack at it. Another defensive play by Luton. Denies us seven shots, three on target. All right, Mensa loses that one, but it's picked up by Lindorfo in the Luton half of the field. Nagami, good through ball, and Mikatan hits the post. Oh, man. That was unlucky. Everton's taking the lead over Lincoln in their game. Wheel, Nagami. Over to Rush. He takes a crack, and it almost goes in off the keeper save, but just drifts outside the post, giving us a corner. And, oh! <laughs> McNeil's header goes off the post. Oh, my goodness. That is astounding. There's a big save by Gibbon. Uh, I must have went over. Gave us a goal kick. Looked like he went up and got a finger on that. All right. Rush on the overlap. Beats his man. Beats two men. And there's a header across the goal, but Botang makes the save. Oh, man. We have got to do... Uh, let's demand a little more. I don't want to ride the guys. They're playing really well. Gee whiz. Oh, there's a good spot pass out to Kemper on the wing. And Gibbon, sure-handed save. What's the... Well, I don't even want to... Oh, flick on header. Mikatan into the box. And a big save by Vava. Ugh. Mikatan not getting any breaks in the attack zone today. But we are definitely controlling the match. But this is one of those things where it's just it's just asking to give them one opportunity, right? And you know, them putting it away and, and stealing a game. Romaine's tiring. We may end up having to sub him out early. Demand more. All right. Final minutes. There's a header out. Omer Ukel, or Ucell. Big tackle, but it goes right to Rose. Good, ta good tackle by Felix. Rush gets beaten, and Gibbon concedes, I believe, his first goal since coming over to the club in the transfer window. And there we go.
they've only had three shots, two on target. Had my phone in my pocket and forgot about it. Oh. Gibbon with a nice effort. I certainly can't fault him there, but we're going to have to... We're going to have to do something here, boys. All right, Mensa. Rush building from the back. Romaine picks out Cernan. Cernan slots at home. Bava could not get his foot across, and there's the equalizer. And wait a minute, what the hell happened? Was he offsides? I really regret, you know, one of the things that I liked on the old football manager was you had the little bar at the top where the goals showed up, and you could go back and look at it, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't think he was offsides. Um, I'm going to point the finger. Expect to see a much better showing. You're going to demand more. Felix on the run. He gets tackled away. 15 shots to 4. 1.51 to 0.33 on the XG. Wade into Nagami. Nothing comes from that. Mensa. Wade. Or Wheel, I'm sorry. Oh, he couldn't find it. Rushes into the zone. And it's a header from Jordan Mensa. Jake Rush with the assist. Boy, I don't know how he threaded that ball through there, but that was astounding. So here's Mensa left unmarked. Makes the run. Oh, just, and it went right through Serden, Simley, and Botang. That is incredible that he got that through. Definitely a seeing eye. McNeil gets beaten on the long ball, but luckily he had some defense behind him. Mensa into the box. He takes a crack at the near post. I'm going to go ahead and sub him off. It's going to be a little early. Um, I'm going to drop Cernan back there and then bring Gomez Santos on up top. And Romaine... Now, we don't have any of the guys in here right now, do we? He is right only. All right, let's bring let's bring him in for Romaine, and then we will make him a inside forward. Where he, he cuts in and can use his dominant foot. I think he has the ability to do that business out there. Good ball. Mikatin into the box. One on one. Beats the keeper. Number 23 on the season. Nogami with the assist. And that spots us out to our first lead in the 51st minute. That is really good. Good news. All right. We're going to make those subs. We'll see how that works out. There's Henson's. Crossed over. Cernan is just off the target. Drifting in from that outside. Got him set up as a wide target man. Not sure if that's a good idea or not, but oh, big tackle. Kemper on the counter. He's got Ucell out in front of him. Cernan led up there. I thought he was on that guy. And he just tackled him. I thought he went through his back. Oh, look at the run by Andre Staniklescu. <laughs> he made a huge run right up the middle, and he puts it in to equalize. Our former player stabbing us in the heart. Look, look at him. Look at that. Oh, he just saw the gap, took the run in. Oh, and Gibbon has conceded twice. Over to Cernan. Out to Hens. Oh, and my God, that went off the crossbar, too. Oh, my goodness. You have got to be kidding me. 
We have got to demand more here. Felix looking for some space. Wheel. There's a crack from Nagami at the edge of the box. Good save by Botang to push it wide. Gives us a corner. McNeil can't get his head to the ball. Mikatin brings it back up. Into the attack. Cleared away. Come on, fellas. Yeah, we'll ignore that. Let's try that. Maybe we can beat them over the top a little bit. All right, there's a header. Henson's on the ball. Can he pick out a pass? Nope, he can lose the ball. He's back on it. He's off it again. He's back on it. Well, he's, uh, he's determined, if nothing else. Wheel finds it. Mikatin. Oh, and he goes wide. That was a crazy possession there, wasn't it? Gee whiz. All right. We're going to make one last sub here. Rush, wheel. I think I need somebody in the mid. Do I bring on? He can pass. He's got pace. I don't know why I'm thinking that's just real stupid to put him in there. But he could pick a header on a set piece, couldn't he? Let me look at Day. I'm going with Day. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. Plus that guy. Oh, by the way, yeah, he's throwing a fit. I may have mentioned this and just forgot. Um, Panchenko's throwing a fit that we didn't try to strengthen midfield. So the guy that I signed wasn't good enough for him. Uh, we are going to demand more. We don't have any more subs. Five minutes. And we're not going to get a single highlight. Oh, well. Oh, and here's where... <laughs> Could you... Oh, the big save by Botang. Could you imagine if I had been able to put in that tall guy, Benchenko, and he would have gotten a header in the final second? Oh, my goodness, that would have been insane. I mean, we played well. We dominated this match. Ugh. Uh, hands in pockets. Not good enough. I agree. I agree. Oh, boy. Everton, they must have got the win today. Yep, 4-2 over Lincoln. So they have closed within two points. Norwich, we are within 13. They lost to Portsmouth today, so they are... 13 behind us for automatic promotion. I don't need to win the league, although the silverware is nice, but I, I want the automatic promotion. We're still sitting good for that, but these are the kind of games that we cannot let slip away. And yes, that last win uh, over uh, Nottingham Forest did give us 80 on the goal differential. Pretty crazy. Everton's up to 51. They're scoring. They're certainly not having an issue scoring the ball. All right. Well, Rush, you did do well. Defensive work was good. All right. Well, that was uh, a little bit of a letdown. I think we'll come back for... Let's come back for Barnsley Highlights and Swindon. For the next match and then we'll come back for the season finale hull and qpr uh we might i might have to pop back early and give some highlights from everton or norwich depending on where we're at but that's two episodes down the road uh so yep let's look at uh barnsley and swindon for the next episode guys hit that like button that's how you support me in the channel gets more people knowing about the videos Thank you so much for that, and hit that subscribe and notification button to get reminders daily football manager content Monday through Saturday. Have a good one. Bye.